Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the third video in the STM32 Modbus series, and today we will see how to write coils and holding registers. You must watch the previous video, as we will continue where we left off last time. Also I am not going to explain every detail that has been already explained in the previous video. If you are starting the Modbus series, better watch the playlist in the order. The connection is the same as how it was in the previous video, so I am going to ship that part too. We have already covered the function codes 1 to 4, and today we are going to cover the codes 4, 5, 15 and 16. We will cover them one by one, starting with a single coil, then single register, and finally moving to the multi-coils and registers. Here is the project from the previous video, and today I will continue with the same project. Let's delete this part as we don't need to process the data sent by the slave device. Let me delete a few things here. Alright we will start with writing a single coil, the function code 5. The TX data format is going to be like this. There are going to be a total 8 bytes, with the data field consisting of 2 bytes for the coil address, and 2 bytes for the data. Although we are writing a single coil, which is 1 bit in size, we still need to send 2 bytes of data. Here is an example for writing a single coil. As mentioned here, in order to set the coil, we need to send 2 bytes, 0 cross FF followed by zero. And to reset the coil, we send the two bytes again, but this time both should be zero. Alright let's try this. We have the function code 5, to write a single coil. I am keeping the coil address as zero, that means the actual coil address will be one. I want to set the coil at this location, so the data is going to be zero cross FF, followed by zero. The CRC will be calculated as usual, and we have totally 8 bytes of the TX data. Let's build and run this project. I am renaming the project to Modbus Master Writes. Alright let's debug it now. We don't need this data array anymore. Let's put a breakpoint in the callback function. The slave will anyway send the response, so we would know when it does that. I have enabled the coil field in the slave software. Note that it does not have the function code 5, so I am keeping the function code 1, with read or write enabled. The function code 1 is for reading the coil data, and along with it I have enabled the write operation. With the write enabled, the software can accept the function code 5, so we are good to go with this setup. I am resetting all the coils. Note that the first coil is off. Alright let's run the code now. We have hit the breakpoint. Here is the TX data, and we have the slave ID, the function code is 5, the coil address is 0, the data is 0 cross FF, followed by 0, and finally the CRC at the end. If you notice the received data, it is exactly the same as the TX data. Let's check the slave device. Here you can see the first coil has been set now. Similarly if we want to reset the coil, all we need to do is, send the two bytes as both zeros. Now you can see the first coil has been reset. So this is how we can force a single coil to either set, or reset. I hope this part was clear. Now we will modify a single register, but let me comment out this code before that.
Now we are going to work with the function code 6, which is writing a single register. Here is an example for the same. The process is pretty much straightforward, where the master sends the 2 bytes register address, followed by the 2 bytes of data. The function code is 6 this time. Let's say I want to write to the register at address 2, that is, the register at the address 40003, and the two bytes of data will be 0 cross 12 and 0 cross 34. We are again sending 8 bytes in total, so no need to modify anything else. Let's build and debug the code. Here I have enabled the holding registers in the slave software. I have enabled the read and write operations, so the function code 6 will be accepted. We are going to write this register at 40003, so let me first reset it to zero. Alright we have hit the breakpoint now. You can see the TX data and RX data are exactly the same. The slave has responded with the same data, that means the write must have been successful. Let's check the slave software. Here you can see the register does have some value in it. Actually 13330 is the decimal equivalent of 0 cross 3412. It is writing the lower byte first, and that is because I haven't checked this box right here. I forgot to do that during recording, and now it will stay like this throughout this video. Anyway here you can see the actual data in hexadecimal format, and it is the same as what the master has sent. Let's say we want to write another register with the address at 40006. The software has been timed out, so I am restarting it. Let's run the code now. Here you can see the data has been stored at the location 40006. So we were able to write a single coil, and a single register. Now we will write multiple coils. The function code for writing multiple coils is 15. As mentioned here, we can only write maximum 1968 coils at once. The TX data format for writing multiple coils is going to be like this. The data field here consists of the starting coil address, the number of coils we want to write, the number of bytes we will send to the slave, and the data itself. Each coil is one bit in size, so the number of coils and number of bytes will be different. If we want to write up to 8 coils, we can send one byte of data. If we want to write up to 16 coils, we need to send 2 bytes of data. So even if we want to write 9 coils, we still need to send 2 bytes. Let's write the code now. Here the function code is 15. Let's keep the coils address 3, which makes the actual coil address as 4. This is the starting coil address, where the modification begins. In this example, I am going to modify 15 coils. The data for these 15 coils is going to take 15 bits in total, and therefore we need to send 2 bytes. Next we will send the data. The first byte we send will be used for the first 8 coils, and the next byte will be used for the next 8 coils, and so on. Here is an example to write multiple coils. They are also sending 2 bytes of data, 0 cross CD and 0 cross 01. You can see how the first byte is used for the coils at the address 20 to 27, and the next byte is used for the remaining two coils. We need to modify the CRC part now. We have already stored up to the position number 8, so the CRC data will be stored in the positions 9 and 10. Before calculating the CRC, the TX data already has 9 elements in it, so pass the appropriate value here. Now our TX data buffer is ready. 
We still need to modify the size in the send data function. Alright everything is ready, so build and debug the code. Here in the slave software, all the coils are in the reset state. I am only viewing 20 coils now. We have set the start coil at the address 4. Alright we have hit the breakpoint now. Here you can see the coils have been modified. Starting from coil 4, we have on, off, on, off, on, on, off, 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 on, off, on, on, on. This is exactly what we sent. So the coils were modified as per the data we sent, and this part has worked very well. Now the final part for this video, will be writing the multiple registers. The function code is 16 for writing the multiple holding registers. We can write a maximum, of 123 registers at once. The function code is 16 for writing multiple registers. I am keeping the start address at 0, that means the actual address will be 40001. Let's say we want to write 3 registers. Since each register is 16 bit in size, the total data for 3 registers will be 48 bits, which is 6 bytes. Now we need to write 6 bytes of data that we are going to send. The 2 bytes data for each register, with the high byte being sent first. So here I have prepared the 6 bytes to be sent to the registers. Let's modify the CRC again. TX data now has a total of 15 bytes, and we need to modify it in the send data function. Let's build and debug the code now. I am resetting all the registers to zero. Alright let's run the code now. We have hit the breakpoint, means the slave must have responded. You can see the registers 40001, 2 and 3 have been modified with the new data. The decimal format might not look very correct, but you can see the hexadecimal data here. The 6 bytes have been stored in the 3 registers. The slave response consists of the slave ID, the function code, the starting register address, the number of registers that were written, and finally the CRC. So we were able to write the data into the holding registers. This is it for the video. We saw how to force a single coil, how to preset a single register, and how to write multiple coils and registers. I hope you understood how the master writes these data into the slave device. We will continue with the series, and now we will cover the STM32 as a slave, where it will respond to different queries sent by the master. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.